Hi everybody, Linda Carroll here from Gather of Great Things Studio and um, I told you last time I would show you my daily journal that I use. Um, it is a the horizontal format of a I think I'm saying this right, Rotter Fadden uh, notebook and I like it because I can just kind of bullet things that are going on uh, on the left side and on the right side I have space to collage or draw <clears throat> or write um, additional uh, parts of my story and this is one of the altered paper clips that we're going to do today um, this one is I think it's really really cute it has two people um, on a mini postcard I took some postcards and reduced them down and then I also used some Tim Holtz minis here and here and here and added a charm and the background is a dictionary page and I have some little tiny seashells that I've collected down at the beach and some tea dyed cheesecloth. So this is how I use it in this journal. I've also used them um, on covers of journals as an embellishment. And I added the paper clip to the back of this piece and I really like the way it it uh, sits in here and this again is a, is a little mini postcard some Tim Holtz mini ephemera I backed the background with um, with dictionary paper and I was able to find the starfish uh, listing in the dictionary and there was actually an illustration of the starfish and then the charm is a starfish so we're going to make some of these today and uh, I like it that I can use it in my in my um, my collage journal and my regular journals and in my bookmaking. I think one thing, I since I use a lot of vintage, vintage papers and um, do a lot of tea dyeing and everything, uh, everything kind of comes together. So the vintage papers are throughout all of my work, including my, my paintings. So let's get started on this little fun project. I have some more examples of uh, pieces, the altered paper clips that I have done in the past. And I have a few more, but I think this is enough to give you an idea. This is, you know, much the same as the one uh, in my both of my books, the mini postcard. Uh, Tim Holtz ephemera and this little C word comes from a children's book a dictionary and I have a let's see where am I I call them my mini flashcards and I keep them in this little box and when I need something I'll pour them out and look for just the right words, but they reminded me of the flashcards that we used to use when I was in school a long time ago. But uh, this one is a lot of fun. I think this one I'm gonna use on the front of a mermaid journal. But uh, again, the mini postcard, I have a, a little, um, what is it called, a little, little brad there that has a ship on it. Little seashells and then I use little uh, alphabet charms at the bottom to spell out mermaid. 
so I think I think this one will be on the front of a of a mermaid journal and this one uh, I made it's a little bit different I used an old almanac page for the background and then some minis uh, that are layered and added a button and another little brad over here on the side so let's get started number one you need to pick out your puzzle pieces and I happen to have a puzzle that my grandchildren no longer played with and you <clears throat> these are fairly large pieces now a lot of a lot of puzzles that you get the pieces are this size and I don't embellish these I use these as embellishments themselves in uh, either um, books or on a collage piece so if you have puzzles that are this tiny no don't even try um, this puzzle is varnished on both sides and you want to find pieces that have a large <clears throat> working area something like this although it could be used because the working area is so small these would probably be the last ones that I use up in a puzzle for the embellished paper clips but these are great these have a lot of working area so let's um, let's start with these you need to sand and roughen up the fronts and back of the puzzle piece and it doesn't you don't have to get all of the paint off what you're doing is just roughing off the top so that your uh, paint will adhere and I do paint um, all the puzzle pieces that I use gives a nice consistent background and uh, you can paint it any color you want I've, I've usually I usually paint them black but you need to do the um, front and I wipe it off a little bit and then you need to do the back and you can't really see anything in this but I'm just kind of taking off the shiny the varnish so that the paint will stick I paint the front and the back of the puzzle pieces sometimes you'll have a puzzle piece that will stick up from behind oops a page and um, oopsies I didn't really need to do that uh, and you want the back well I kind of decorated this one a little bit more but you want the back to be um, you know appealing and I put a little lighthouse on the back of this one but um, this one I haven't added a paper clip to if I use it for the cover of a, of a book or journal I don't put a paper clip on the back so so I'm going to use uh, an acrylic paint this one happens to be apple barrel to paint my puzzle piece and you don't need a lot it's amazing how far the paint goes wipe off my brush and I paint the front and the back and, and the edges so I've got a nice background color coating Now you have to let the front dry before you do the back. So I'll just go around the edges and make sure you get all the edges. If you don't get all of the edges, it's okay because I also go around and 
distress the outside of the puzzle piece with either a walnut stain or vintage photo. So I'll go ahead and paint that. And then you need to set aside to dry on the one side and then you can go back in and do the other side. I usually do a number of puzzle pieces at one time. Um, so I'm gonna put this over to the side and I have a few pieces that um, are ready to work on. I gather together all of the pieces that I think I'm going to use on a piece and kind of lay it out roughly on the puzzle piece. And I found a uh, dictionary page that has the word shore, seashore, the shore on it, that I've already cut out to fit the puzzle piece. Hi everybody, um, my camera stopped and I did not know it. So I finished uh, this altered puzzle piece um, and without my knowledge, you did not get to see me work on it. And I also uh, finished this one, which um, includes a stamp that I uh, I did a video on about a, um, a month ago, I guess, uh, using book pages and a picture from another book and a frame. So I'll I'll put the link to uh, this video um, at the end of the video. So if you're interested, you can see how this was made. This little postage stamp piece was made but um, I didn't put any paper over top of the puzzle piece in this one and I like the way it looks I like the contrast of the uh, black against the rest of the artwork um, I did put a paper clip on the back of this one so what I'm going to do is I've laid out a lot of samples here. I'm going to do two more for you. Um, I've run out of my little postcard ladies. So let me clear off. Oh, I don't think I showed you this one. Um, this is another little mini postcard. And I did a little collage up here at the top. And the dictionary page in the back, um, the page had the word cockle shell on it. And so I put a little shell uh, charm decoration on here. And then a little baby conch shell over here. So that's a really fun one. So let me clear these out of the way. And we can <coughs> do a few more. Uh, these little altered puzzle pieces that can become a paper clip. I've kind of roughly laid out um, two more puzzle pieces. And this one, just for fun, I'm going to try not putting anything on the background and leave the puzzle piece the way it is and um, and see if I like that and I started um, actually this is the one I was going to do that with so let's see let's see what happens I'm going to do this one first because I have all the painting done on this and the first thing I need to do 
is glue the dictionary. Here we go with glue again. I'm sorry. Let's see. Maybe again I will turn my glue bottle upside down and maybe just use a maybe just use a um, a glue stick on here I'll make some room for my glue book And here is my little dictionary piece. So let's glue this on first. And remember, you can line it up as closely as possible um, to the edges because we have that little trick with the emery board that we're going to uh, take off any of the overhang using the emery board. See here, I have a pretty big overhang okay. so with your emery board just go around that edge and you can see the, the paper comes right off so And it gives you a nice clean edge. Well, one thing nice about doing the video again is my husband was outside mowing the lawn and using his lower to clean up the leaves so I won't have any of that going on in the background which is nice okay so go all the way around your edges and it comes off really easily I spoke to a number of people today, new subscribers to my to my channel, and thank you all for finding me and and uh, deciding to watch my videos. Okay. So we need to go in and go around the edges and distress the edges a little bit. I'm using frayed burlap for that. And if you happen to have scuffed up any of the black on the edges, this is enough to 
clean that up too. So, these are the new ones are going to be a little different from my other ones because I had all of my pieces and my C pieces together and now I just kind of had to pull whatever I had available to do these other puzzle pieces. So I think I'm still going to use the um, coffee dyed cheesecloth. I just like the texture that it adds and um, I think I actually have two layers here. I don't think I need two. I don't think. So this one has has a horizontal design. I believe that did not work earlier. I think it's time to get some more Fabri-Tac. This is really thick. I think I could probably use some nail polish remover and thin it down but okay let's put this on and again I like to kind of wrinkle it a little bit it'll give it just a little bit more uh, texture and also lift the paper up off of the puzzle piece, give it a little bit more dimension. Okay. And this is what I was going to put onto this piece. I have one of my little flashcards <clears throat> that I cut out of a children's dictionary. And then I found this really beautiful stamp that has an amethyst on it and um, I thought that was so pretty and I was I was laying this to you know just putting this together I kind of bumped it and it moved around and shifted all of my pieces so that they all kind of overlapped and I thought wow I really like that instead of beauty being, you know, in a little tiny space. And I'm going to put that little button right there. So, first thing we need to do is do a little bit of distressing around the edges. And I have this little calling card. I'm not sure where this came from because I just had it in my um, mini ephemera box. So I love the colors on it though. It's just so pretty. So 
let's glue that down on top of the cheesecloth. And I like it too because it's not going to be lay flat flat on the uh, puzzle piece. It, it'll have a little bit of dimension because of the cheesecloth underneath. So let's tilt that just tilt that a little bit. And there we go. And then I have the little butterfly. Oh, I gotta. Let's um, distress these edges a little bit, get rid of that white. Or as much of it as we can. Tiny bit of glue on here. Okay, and I've 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 let him uh, let the butterfly overlap the cheesecloth and then come in and overlap the card. And I think that looks really, really pretty. And then beauty, let's use the glue stick on here. My little flash card. Oh, I didn't, well, that's okay. I didn't um, distress the edge. That's all right. Not to worry. Oops. I have a tear in that stamp. And let's just use the glue stick on the back of this too because it's going to be glued to paper, so it should be fine. And again, I have a little edge over top of the of the cheesecloth. And then that little bow and the button, let's go right there. This doesn't add a lot of thickness to the puzzle piece, so I think it will be fine to use it with inside a book. So we'll 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 make this one a paper clip. Okay. Make sure that adheres really, really well. And there it is. I mean, that's pretty much done. Now, if you want to add, I found some little beads. If you want to add some of those, you certainly can. Put my lid on here and turn it upside down so I, I'll get some glue out the next time I need it. Um, let's see if I can, if it'll work on a on a bulb pen. Oh dear, did not need to do that. Okay. 
And I think I'm going to use, I've got a couple different colors of ball pins. I think I want to use a kind of a bronzy color. Let's see what happens. If not, I still have some of the little tiny pearls. Um, let's see. Oh, they go all the way around. That's great. Let's see. Got two. Let's see what happens. I think I'm gonna hang I'm gonna hang these from the bottom. So without my punch. Oh, I made the hole too big. Oh well. That's okay. Let's hope it's not up too far. Okay. Let's see what happens. Should I be able to get it closed? Put those little beads on there. A little cantankerous. Maybe just one bead. <laughs> really doesn't want to work with two. I think I'll use the purple one since I have the the um, amethyst stamp with the amethyst stone on it. Let's see what happens here. I punched my hole up too far. I did not plan that very well. So let's see what happens here. Okay. I think I'm probably going to go in and put um, a pearl on either side if I can get that to go around. But I like that. It's really pretty. And then if you want to turn this into a paper clip, we'll go around on the back and we want to I think this one, since it's flat on the top, I'll put the paper clip on this way. So we need a piece of black paper. Again, this is uh, the front cover of parchment tracing paper. But I don't like to waste anything. So I save the covers and I save the back covers from all my paper pads and use those so we just let's do it this way just slide your paper clip on there do I want to glue it this way or do I want to glue it this way I think this one I'll try this way. I think I've been gluing in the other way. But you slide your paper clip on there. And then turn it over. And you're going to glue the back side. But you're going to make sure you have a lot of glue on the clip itself. And then go around the outside edges. Going in here. And then lay it on the back and press down really hard. I like to go around where the paper clip is underneath and really 
make a little indent so that the paper lays flat on either side. And kind of hold it for a couple minutes. The fabric tack will dry fairly quickly, but you can either clip it or hold it and till it dries. But that's it. Really cute. I like it. Okay. That's one. Now let's let's see. Let's look at this one. I was gonna actually I was gonna paint this one. Um and we still can. You know, we can still paint it. And then while it's drying, I'll work on on this one. So remember, the first thing you need to do is you need to sand your puzzle piece just to get rid of that shine that's on there. I'm filming this at night, so the light may not be that great in here, but I was so disappointed that I didn't get a video up this afternoon, and I really wanted to follow through on my last video since I've been contacting a lot of people about my channel, and, um, so I thought, well, I'm, I'm really going to work hard on this and try and get it finished this evening. Since this one has um, varnish on both sides, I do have to get the shine off of both sides. You really can't see what I'm doing again. But. I can see the varnish picking up, and you can see it falling off the edge of the puzzle piece. So, clean up my mess a little bit, wipe off my piece, get the dust off of it, and we can, oh, look at this, I've got a puzzle piece ready, that'll work, yay! Let's do that. Okay, so <laughs> here is your puzzle piece when it's sanded and ready for paint. But I have one that has been painted. I've just found over on the side. And it's got a little bit of grunge on it, but I think it'll work. So I only have to paint one side, which is great. So I'm using this Apple Barrel black acrylic paint and have my brush ready to go almost. And we'll just paint the back of the puzzle piece. And this dries really fast, so it, it shouldn't take too long to, to dry. I'll just put a thin coat on. And then while I'm waiting for that one to dry, I'll put a coat on this one. So my husband and I are on a modified Mediterranean diet and I'm finding I have to cook more often. <laughs> um, so 
I'm being very careful about what we eat. We both kind of overindulged during the holidays and then we went on the cruise. So we are both trying really, really, really hard to get a little bit of a healthier diet going here and a lifestyle. So been eating a lot of chicken and a lot of seafood and I really do love the Mediterranean diet whenever we go to Europe uh, I love the food there it's always so fresh and delicious but there the bread is also so <laughs> fresh and delicious and they have um, they're very very strict at least in Italy and I'm believe throughout most of Europe about the um, the flour that is used in the breads and in Italy they are very very um, very very adamant about the fact that there are no additives in the bread and that the flour that the breads are made of um, is not a GMO product and is not something that um, has anything harmful in it. Their bread is very, very healthy. So uh, we haven't been eating bread. We haven't been eating pasta. Um, we've been eating a, a very, very low carb uh lifestyle my menus are have changed drastically um, I have been eating some veggie noodles and uh, and th that that satisfies my desire for pasta um, my husband says eh, it's okay but <laughs> he's not thrilled he likes his pasta Anyway, we are we are really, really, really trying to be good. So I've been I've been cooking a lot. Okay. Okay. Now this one I think I'm going to use this, although I haven't painted the back yet. Um, that's okay. I just basically want to show you how I'm going to put together the front. Like I said, this this is a, a stamp um, that I made. It's supposed to look like a, a postage stamp, large postage stamp. I used a book page and a background piece of um, it was actually a, a little mini cut off of the back of a pack that, to make cards from. And then this picture, this illustration was from a book. And then I used uh, stamps, like, like canceled stamp stamps on here. So let's put a little bit of... cheesecloth on here. Just a little bit, I think. Here we go again. I think tomorrow I'm going to go to Hobby Lobby, I think, or somewhere and get some new glue so I'm not getting as frustrated as I am right now with this glue. Okay, here we go.
I'm going to crinkle it up just a little bit. And she'll go there. And then I had this peeking out from that side. And I had a dance ticket to get to a dance up here. And I had, I thought I had a butterfly. Did I have a butterfly? Yeah. I had a butterfly here. And then I had this two for 25 cents down here. It made me think of, um, oh gosh, there were dance halls back during um, one of the world wars and men would go in and buy tickets um, to dance with the women in there. And that's why this two for 25 cents kind of felt like it belonged on this page. This has a little bit of stuff that didn't come off in the die cutting process. Okay, so this one is already uh, distressed around the corner. This one probably wouldn't need it, but just in case. I'll just do a little bit. Okay, and then let me put the blue on the back of my stamp. I'll put a link to the video that talks about how to make these stamps. And then the little dance, I put this upside down or I'm not gonna get any glue. Okay, this little dance ticket. Can't remember where I had that little little bow. Let's see, I had her there. I had the ticket up here. Maybe I didn't have the bow on this one. I had the twenty-five cents down there. Hmm. Maybe that was for another one. I don't know. A little dance ticket on. Oops. Upside down.
and this little butterfly, this little flutterby. Two for twenty five cents. That will go there, and that will go there. This is kind of dark compared to the other ones that I did. That's okay. Maybe that's why I was thinking I wanted that little the one here to lighten it up a little bit. Let's play with it a little bit and see. Okay. That's the altered puzzle piece so far. I like it. If I did put this bow one, where would it go? It could go there. That kind of brightens it up a little bit. What would I put in the middle of it? Hmm. I guess I could put another button on. I have this old mason jar full of old buttons. There's just a little cream color, kind of a bone button. Great stuff. I see a gold one down here that I kind of like. Let's see. Yep, that's it. This little jar is just a portion of my buttons. I, I like to keep it on my table because I like to look at it. <laughs> so, like all the different colors and textures and the, I like the jar. So that brightens it up a little bit, I think. So let's put the, that one. I think the bow originally that would have been the front, but I like it to use it in the back because it lays flatter. And then I'm not going to put any thread on that. I think it's just the I think just the uh, button is enough. Kind of matches her gold earring that she's, I don't know if you can see that, kind of matches her gold earring that she's touching um, in the drawing. So there we go. I like that one. I like them all. These are really addicting, uh, I have to tell you. 
once you start, you can't you can't stop. At least I haven't been able to. If I have a little bit of time in the studio, I don't have a lot of time, I'll come in and sit down and do a couple little puzzle pieces because I, I, I'll always use them, you know. I can use them everywhere and all the different things that I do. Okay, so that's another one like that. My paper clip, I think it's just about dry on this one. This one I think is full enough. I don't need to put a pin on it. I'm not going to put a paper clip on this one because I might use this in another way. I might use this um, on a book, for example. So I think I'm going to leave this one as it is. And I have one more to do. Uh, which is this little little one and this is the one I was going to try to work with without um, painting the background because I like the way this pink picks up the the pinks in the background but I didn't really pull anything else um, anything else to go with it so let's see I keep my my little mini flashcards in here so let's go look and see what we can find this little thing says I am fully occupied so let's see if I can find a find a little Flash card I can use. Mm. Magic, wish, magic, treasure, flower, summer. Summer might work. Christmas won't. Kiss. Yes, kiss. That's the one. Put these all back in my little box. And I need a little, little label. look in my little mini ephemera box and see if I can find another little mini label that um, might work on here. There's a clock that might work. I've used a lot of the little mini labels, so I'd have to search for some more. Kind of works with the colors. Let's keep that one out. Let me think maybe there's a diamond in the future. Let's put that one over there. That'll work. There's some flowers. Mm, don't see any of my little mini labels left. It's a big one. I have a little bit more stuff down here. The little teeny tiny one. I think that's too little. That's number two. I like looking through all this stuff because it just inspires me for the next 
next piece that I do. But I really don't see any more little labels. Oh dear, a little teeny one. Uh, oh well. Let's see what happens. If I can make Kiss fit in there. If I can't, I'm just going to use it like I use Beauty in the other one. And, uh, I think that'll be fine. I don't think we need tubes powder in that one. Okay, let's see if I can get Kiss to fit in there. And it's going to be a little tiny label. Very tiny. But it might work. that off. See what happens. It worked. Amazing. All right. It worked. It worked. It worked. So, my glue stick. Sometimes when I'm doing these little teeny tiny things I feel like I should be using uh, tweezers okay let's see what we've got here we've got some things to work with let's use a little bit of the the cheesecloth Hands are sticky. Want it that way or this way? Let's see. I want it this way. I think there might be a diamond in the future here. So let's get this Scottish diamond right there and I have the kiss going on and there should probably be some flowers going on too but I don't know exactly where they're going to fit in maybe like that And what else do we need? Hmm. I think we need maybe a little something up here. We have kiss, we have diamonds, we have flowers. Maybe a button up there. Usually I don't use one of something. Usually I have to have two of something to make me happy. That, I don't know, what do you think? I think it might work. It's kind of cute. See what happens. Uh, 
I like all this layering and textures and I like the texture of this piece uh, and it's very abstract you know you really can't tell um, what these images are in here or on here so and the glue the Fabri-Tac will fit on here just um, stick you know things will stick on here just fine even though it's shiny now I think we'll use another different distress pad because this one says walnut stain. Let's see what this what this does. I think I have to re-ink my yeah. It's a nice contrast. I need to re-ink my frayed burlap. Okay, so you'll go there, and then we've got the diamonds we need to introduce. And that'll go there. And we have the flowers. I need to take everything up a little bit. We have the flowers and we have the kiss. Ah, that's really, that's really cute. Really, really cute. You down there. And we will put you right here. And the flowers. I'm really into romance on this one. It is almost Valentine's Day. So, this may be part of my husband's Valentine's card. I try to make him handmade cards for each occasion and he likes that since I spend so much time in my studio um, there they are and I like the way that these pick up the colors here that's really pretty really pretty I like that a lot and we can put let's see Put the button like that it'll probably stick down better i have a little pearl that can go beside that that's kind of cute i think i will put some thread through this button just for a little bit more texture. Goodness, my fingers are dirty. <laughs> Working with the paint. If I can get a, I don't think I can get a bow. My fingers aren't that nimble anymore, unfortunately. 
turn that off a little bit. Okay. I'm almost through with this blue. <laughs> It really is not my best friend tonight. Oh, goodness. Let's see if my glossy accents will work. I have a pen in that. Yes. Right there. A little glob right beside it. And put the pearl in there. Oops. There we go. I think it's the beginning of a Valentine's card for my husband. So. I'm not going to put a, uh, a paper clip. So this started out to be an altered paper clip um, little tutorial. Instead, I think it's altered puzzle pieces. Um, and I really kind of like that. That's really cute. So, okay. Let me bring out all of my finished pieces so we can take a look at them and you can see we did this one we did this one we did this one well I did that one off camera and I did this one when the camera was supposed to be running and it was not so, and then I did this one when the camera was supposed to be running. So I've done five uh, altered puzzle pieces. And then I have this whole box that's partially full of my other ones. So let me show you a close up of these. And then I think I'm going to say good night. So there's our dancing lady with the gold earring. The woman with the gold earring and here is the seashore one let's see here turn my shell around and I did get that shell the little charm on my cruise I bought a pair of earrings and the shop owner gave me this uh, this charm and then we have this beautiful lady on the black background. I did not put dictionary pages behind this one. And then we have beauty with the amethyst. And last but not least, we have the, I think, the beginning of my husband's Valentine card. Which I might do, might do the rest of it with you. So thank you so much for watching my altered puzzle piece afternoon and into the evening. <laughs> and, um, and then you can make them into altered paper clips. So have a great rest of your day or evening. I'm going to go wash my hands and I hope that you enjoyed this please remember I, I truly hope that you will subscribe to my channel and give me a thumbs up if you like this and I look forward to seeing you next time many blessings bye for now